my family, it was like, okay, we're not going to have any feelings here. It was almost like I took on the job of doing the feeling for everybody in the family. And that meant that my feelings were giant and huge. So I was taking on the job of feeling the feelings for everybody, but then having to suppress all of that. And that really got my feelings to be even more out of proportion. Hi, I'm Barb Nangle. I want to welcome you to my podcast, Fragmented to Whole Life Lessons from 12-Step Recovery, where I help people heal their emotional, psychological, and spiritual wounds and make deep, lasting changes in their lives. I'm the founder and CEO of Higher Power Coaching and Consulting, LLC, where I coach people on how to develop healthy boundaries. On this podcast, I share my experience, strength, and hope from recovery. I don't support or endorse any particular 12-step recovery fellowship, and I don't claim to speak for any particular 12-step fellowship. I also don't believe that 12-step recovery is the only way to recover. You might need additional help. My hope is that you'll find my words concretely helpful in improving your life, whether you're in recovery or not. This is episode 141. You are responsible to your feelings, not for your feelings. I heard this saying, you're responsible to your feelings, not for your feelings, from Sherry Huber. Sherry is a Buddhist teacher, and she's written a few books that have been extremely helpful to me and my personal development. I believe the one this quote comes from is called, There's Nothing Wrong With You. I'll link it in the show notes. I read her books years before recovery, and I don't think I really understood a lot of what she was saying other than on a superficial level, until I got into recovery and did a lot of work with my feelings. What I understand that statement to mean is, when you have a feeling, you are responsible to feel that feeling. You are not responsible to explain why you're having that feeling. You don't have to have a reason for having that feeling. You're just having that feeling. And your job is to just feel it. Allow the feeling. Don't resist it or ignore it. Don't try to understand it or rationalize it. Just feel it. So here's an example of what Sherry's talking about. If you feel like crying, your job is to cry. Your job is not to go, why the fuck am I crying? I used to do that on a regular basis before I got into recovery. I would say things in my head like, Jesus Christ, Barbara, you're a 52-year-old grown woman. Why are you crying? And that's not what matters. What matters is allowing the tears to come. One of the worst things that my dad would say to me was, do you want me to give you a reason to cry? That is one of the most fucked up things that a parent can say to a kid. It's crazy making. Here I am, a little kid crying, and I'm being told that I'm crying for no reason. This not only invalidated my feelings, it caused me to question my own reality. And it was a threat. All of this caused me to suppress my crying. It caused me to dissociate from my feelings, to question my feelings, to question my reality. And it really distorted my relationship with my feelings. Recovery has really, really helped me to get much more clarity about my feelings. My feelings have become much more right-sized, and I have a much better relationship with my feelings, a much better handle on them. So now this phrase, you are responsible to your feelings and not for your feelings, makes so much more sense to me now that I've been in recovery and have a good relationship with my feelings. I grew up in a family where there was not a lot of feeling going on, and I am a born feeler. The last therapist I had was excellent. I was with her when I got into recovery. And in working with her, I realized how shitty all my other therapists were. Anyway, she helped me to realize that in my family, it was like, okay, we're not going to have any feelings here. And then it was almost like I took on the job of doing the feeling for everybody in the family. And that meant that my feelings were giant and huge. And my parents were like, wait, 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 we're not having any feelings in this family. 
You're definitely not allowed to have any feelings. So I was taking on the job of feeling the feelings for everybody, but then having to suppress all of that. And that really got my feelings to be even more out of proportion. Now, I was definitely a crier my whole life. I cried about everything, whether I was sad, angry, frustrated, you name it. I cried about it, but I did it privately. I didn't cry in front of other people. I remember very specifically being something like 26 or 27 and watching the movie Terms of Endearment with my brother and his girlfriend and just not being able to hold in the tears because it was so heart-wrenching. And I started crying in front of him. That is how notable it was. 30 years later, I recall the very moment and the entire scene of where I was, where I was sitting, who I was with, what I was watching, and what I was feeling. It wasn't until I got into recovery and stopped judging myself so much and started getting closer to other human beings and letting them see who I really was that I was comfortable crying openly in front of others. I've actually cried on the shoulders of some of my fellows in recovery. And my experience is that when you do that, it lessens the grief. Not only do I get the catharsis of crying, but I get the warmth of human connection with another. One of my recovery programs talks about releasing the burden of unexpressed grief so we can slowly move out of the past. And I feel like I finally grieved all the shit that was going on in my life, all the feelings I wasn't allowed to feel. I've learned how to express my feelings as they come up. And I no longer have to grieve about the past. I'm not a crier anymore because I've done the crying over all those things in the past. And I've learned how to handle my feelings as they come up. I'm responsible to my feelings now rather than for my feelings. Now, don't get me wrong. Sometimes it is helpful for me to figure out why I was feeling what I was feeling. But I think it's important to do that after the feelings have subsided. I used to try to figure out why I was feeling something as a way to get away from the feeling. That's not good. That doesn't serve me. What I find more useful is to feel the feeling, express it, let it go through me, and then it's gone. Then I can think about what that was about if I want to. It's a lot easier to access the thinking part of my brain once I've allowed the feelings to go through me. Now, If you have difficulty with your feelings, whether they're way too big like mine, or you don't know what the fuck they are, or they're all suppressed in one big giant tight ball, like you're used to being responsible for your feelings rather than to your feelings, I have a free five-page handout on my website called The Feelings List and Exercise. It walks you through a process to get in touch with your feelings, and it also has a list of some common feelings and their definitions. I'll put the link to that page in the show notes. If you want even more help with your feelings, you might consider joining my membership community. In there, I have a 13-page feelings packet. In addition to the feelings list and exercise I just mentioned, it includes a variety of ways of understanding different gradations of feelings. It has depictions of where feelings reside in the body And it really helps you understand the nuances of different types of feelings and gives you some practice exercises for figuring out what your feelings are. My membership community is called Secure, Loved, and Brave, and it includes way more worksheets than that. Plus, there are two group coaching calls per month. I'll also put the link to that in my show notes if you're interested in looking into it. Just remember, you are responsible to your feelings, not for your feelings.